Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Medic Floor Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson and today I just wanted to discuss a few updates I've made to the uh, new floor plugin that uh, we just released a couple days back. So first off, um, let's jump here into the global settings and pull up the floors tab. So within the floors tab, um, just a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, this uh, draw mode parameter has been added. And you'll notice, I think, by default, it's polyline, but you can set that to face. So basically what that does is when you're using the uh, draw tool, um, <clears throat> it will default to uh, one, of, one of two modes, polyline or face. And sometimes people are, you know, using the face mode more often, so they may uh, not want to have to toggle that when they're using the tool. And so this allows them to uh, get that to default to that specific mode. All right, and we'll show that once I bring up the draw tool. Okay, so second off here, we've got the joist hangers that I've added in. And this does look a little complicated at first glance. Um, you know, you've got six different parameters here, but you'll see as I demonstrate um, hangers, uh, it's really not all that complicated. So uh, you've got start, uh, hangers, end hangers, and mid hangers. And so you've also got the one for um, not first ply but one ply and two ply options all right so i've got these set up um, i think by default these are all set to none like this um, but you can go ahead and kind of preset these to what you want and i think that uh, adds to the efficiency of the plugin quite significantly okay so let's go ahead and jump out of this and i'm just going to go ahead and draw a quick floor. Um, before I do that though, now you'll notice up here in this um, right top right corner, you've got kind of this little jagged polyline thing going on. Uh, what that is telling you, of course, is that the polyline tool or the or draw, draw floor tool is in polyline mode. Um, and then to toggle that, you just use the, um, you got to make sure you're clicked into the screen uh, uh, and take the focus off of the menu. And then um, let me just escape right now. Um, and you hit the up arrow key and notice it goes to face mode here. So if we put our mouse over that, it says draw, floor draw mode equals face. So, and if you just hit that again, it toggles back. So you can toggle back and forth between the two draw modes. So I'm going to go ahead and just use polyline mode. Um, before I do that though, let's scroll down a little bit here. And you'll notice now that we have a option for joist hangers. Okay. So, I've turned on my deck boards and I'm going to make a little deck. I've also turned off, I think I've turned off the rim board, correct? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's turn on our joist hangers here. So I'll go ahead, yes. And when you do that, you'll have these six parameters pop up. And I've actually kind of gone ahead before this video and set my start hanger to this uh, heavier, slightly heavier duty HGUS210. Um, just to show you guys what what happens when you um, differentiate. So, you, you know, you could set these all up with the same hangers, actually. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on, um, let's see, let's go with the 2 by 10 hanger here. Hit update on that. Okay, so like I said, start, mid, and end. Okay, so let's go ahead and just draw this floor real quick. Let's draw a little small. 16 by 12 little deck, I guess. And you'll see also, it takes a, when you turn hangers on, it takes a little bit longer to generate the floor. And the reason being is because, you know, you're, you're basically inserting this uh, pre-made component and then dropping it into the, all the spots. So it, it, it runs, you know, it's, it's pretty zippy, of course, but it, it, it will be a noticeable lag when you uh, draw a floor or edit a floor for that matter. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So <clears throat> notice now that we've got these big beefy hangers on this end, and we've got eh, kind of more your typical uh, two by 10 hanger on this end. So you have that option or granularity where you can specify exactly what hangers you want on which end. Um, and you know, I don't know, sometimes I think maybe that's a little overkill, but there will be situations like on a deck like this where you're hooking up to a ledger board against the house and on the other end you may you know have everything completely turned off so let's let's take a look at that option possibly 
So for instance, let's say um, we want to turn these ones off. We've got this hanging out, overhanging on top of a beam or something. So what you do is you go over to here to end and just go and turn that to none. Okay. And then you'll see that these go away. Okay, so now we've only got hangers on this end and this end. There, in, there are no hangers. Okay, so let's talk about start and end, right? Um, you'll notice now that we've differentiated the hangers by calling some start and some end. So you only really have two options right now with Joyce. They either go parallel to the X or parallel to the Y axis. These, these floors over here are parallel to the Y axis. This floor I just drew, parallel to the X axis. Okay, so the end of the joist that is closest to the origin of the model, right? And the origin is right here. So the end of, that is closest is the start, and the end that is farthest away is the end. Okay, so now if I rotate this um, floor, I'm not actually rotate, I'm, I mean the joist direction. If I change that, let's say, to 90, You'll notice now that these big heavy joist hangers will be at this end, which is the start, and there are none at the end, right? Per uh, what we set up here, right? So start, um, here's our start, and then there's none at the end. Okay, and that makes sense because this is closest to the origin, and then this is farthest away from the origin. All right, pretty self-explanatory, I think, but just wanted to point that out because I'm sure there will be some confusion. Okay, so now let's talk about why we have six parameters here. Okay, so there will be situations now, uh, let's turn off the deck boards actually, just so we can visualize this a little quicker. I'm gonna turn the deck boards off. And give it a second, actually we'll turn the gypsum off too. We're not, we've, I've actually got that layer turned off I think, and the sheathing. We don't need all that on right now. I'm just trying to show this. Okay, <clears throat> so. So what's happening here is we've got a single ply um, joist, right? Now if we switch it out to double ply, and watch what happens to those joist hangers. Okay, and now to notice we've also got um, both ends has, have a joist hanger. And that's because if you look down here in your options, you'll notice the start hanger for two ply has the LUS210 underscore 2z and actually the exact same hanger here for the end as well you know so now if we turn that off let's say the end um, these ones over here should go away and they do okay so you can see that when you switch from one ply to two ply your hanger selection will automatically be per this um, little little panel here or matrix of hangers that you have <clears throat> and this also applies to, in the case, let's go back to a single ply. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to, and notice it went to that one, I am going to double up one of these joists. Let's say number three. Okay. That's over there, actually. So, notice that the double joist has the correct double joist hanger automatically uh, selected for it or inserted. So, and that of course is per this um, options that you have here. So if it is a two ply at the start, it's going to put in that 210-2. And so, you know, you can, there's quite a bit of flexibility here. You know, like let's say that you did want to have, if it is a two ply, you want to have, uh, you know, whatever, um, Let's go ahead and update that again. <clears throat> Actually, what did I change? Oh, I say I changed that. Oh, yeah, that's, just, well, that's fine. Okay. Actually, I put the two ply on the one ply. See, I mean, it'll do it. It, it will do whatever you tell it to do, right? So obviously, that's the wrong joist hanger for a, a single ply joist. So we need to switch that out to that one. And then we hit update. And there we go. Okay, so now we've got kind of what, you know, would be typical for something like this. Okay, a um, couple other things probably that should be aware of with these joist hangers. And we're going to get into some more complicated examples here shortly. You know, if you offset the joist, um, 
let's for instance let's say we offset joist number five and let's offset it uh, six inches maybe so let's go ahead and do that now we notice we, we push that joist over and the hangers came with it so that's something i just want to point out that uh, you can still remove joists offset joists double joists up and all of that should be good and if it isn't good you guys let me know and i will get it fixed okay so i'm just going to turn all this off and go back to our regular array okay so so you know this is a kind of a typical you know deck sort of a situation or you know just a simple span um so then people are going to ask well what are these mid hangers for right we've got start we've got end and there's always a start and there's always an end because there's always you know one a, a line basically has two ends when we get into these more complicated situations right um this here's a good example and i'm sure i'm gonna close this out and turn off uh, the deck the deck layer which is the framing layer if i can find it here okay <clears throat> um this is a good example so here's a floor where we've got this kind of weird cutout or whatever going on and i wanted to show this one because by default if you regen this um floor and it will take a second regen i'm going to turn on my ruby console too just to follow what i've got going on here off the screen um <clears throat> basically you've got a more complicated situation here and this is where the mid hanger option comes into play so notice that if i edit this floor i'm going to edit it and i'm coming down here now and right now we're dealing with just single ply so ignore all the two ply uh, options but at the start we've got this hgu which is that really heavy duty hanger uh, selected and then i've got this um two by ten uh, hanger here and and i don't know there, there may be a situation where you want to differentiate these hangers in the middle versus the ones on the ends uh, maybe it uh, maybe not probably not but if you do that is always an option to you, right? So I'm going to show you, for instance, this, this, let's go with a slightly smaller one just to really make it pop out at you what's going on here. Okay, so obviously you can see that this end hanger and the start hanger are, are obviously two different hangers, but those are also different from these two hangers. And now the mid hangers are the hangers not at the end and the start of the span, but like if there's a cutout or something, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get these hangers inserted instead. Now, again, you can make all of those the same. I mean, and probably in most practical situations, they would be the same. But if you want to differentiate them, you have that flexibility there. So the problem with this sort of thing is, you know, it complicates things. It gives you more parameters. It makes your menus larger. Um, I, I get that. Um, but at the same time, Sooner or later, somebody's going to come along and say, hey, well, I need to be able to do this and this and this. And so I'm trying to put in enough flexibility in, but, you know, maintain enough simplicity so it's not overwhelming. So it's a little bit of a, a tightrope tight walk, I guess. I don't know. All right. So now let's take a peek right here at this particular situation. So as you can see, the way we've got this set up, this particular joist right here is being kind of trimmed right because it falls right on the um right on that dividing line i guess if i turn the framing back on you can really visualize a little better here let's see should i turn that on okay there we go right so the way this works out is it just so happens um i'm gonna actually move this out of the way sorry i probably should have shuffled things around before i got started here but i just want to put this on the grid so you guys can see better what what i'm trying to explain okay so we got that on the grid better okay so if we look over at uh look at the bottom here this thing where how it all lands because of the way we drew this you know kind of on our one foot centers this joist happens to land right you know right mid joist right and so that is why it is being trimmed it's just because we're on 16 inches set on center and this joist lands in the middle so 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 what happens with that is is the algorithm that is placing the hangers is looking at one edge along 
the uh, the joist and it's saying hey is this does this edge get split and if it is split or cut and has multiple edges forming that or, or multiple lines that are forming that edge then it will try to put mid hangers along it right and that's what's happening here because each one of these joists actually is is that that is the full joist but it's actually cut into two solids Okay, so that is why we end up with this additional joist hanger, which of course we don't want, doesn't make any sense, and probably needs to go away, right? So we can deal with this in a couple ways. Um, you know, what I would probably do in this situation is offset this joist, right? So right now I think this is, um, let's take a look, let me bring up my, okay, that's joist number seven. So what I would probably do is, and these are inch and a half joists, I'd go here and I'd go joist number seven and I would separately offset that. Um, let's bring it back minus three quarters of an inch. I think that should do what we want. Let's try that. Yes, and that does, okay. So what we've done is we've basically offset it half the ply thickness, which is where it was, because it was on the center set you know three quarters of an inch and by doing that it brought it right in line with this edge and of course then it's no longer cutting it and if it's no longer cutting the joist well now we get you know properly only two joist hangers there and then the, it just spans the full distance all right so that is how you might encounter that when you've got these complex floors and then you've got you know kind of trimmed pieces of joists that are it's not really confusing the plugin, but it's the plugin is saying, hey, I I think it needs a joist hanger here, but I'm not entirely sure. And if it doesn't, then you just want to adjust it with using the offsets for that. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers what I was intending to cover with regards to that sort of thing. But as you can see, um, trying to make this very flexible can be a bit difficult and a bit confusing to some. So that is why I'm making this video, obviously and trying to explain what these mid hangers are all about. So we've got start hangers, end hangers, and mid hangers. And um, hopefully that gives everybody enough flexibility with uh, these crazy uh, complex floors, as I call them. Okay, so now let's jump over finally to this last little floor that I was just testing here earlier. So what this is doing is this is not a floor opening yet. The floor openings will automatically um, my intent, of course, is to make sure that we have hangers on the t what I call the joist tails and when it's cut. But this is just using the subtract feature and it's chopping a hole through this floor. OK, and you can do this right now. This is this is functional. I mean, I, I just I just did this and it's and it, it works. Um, but you'll notice that there are no joist hangers assigned to the ends. And the reason is because in the algorithm, <clears throat> there might be situations where you want to do some sort of, sort of subtraction like this and you may want to completely subtract away everything, right? I mean, generally that's what you want to do. Like you want to subtract away the decking, the joists, and you probably want to remove any hangers as well. So what really is happening here is this subtraction feature is in, in the whole algorithm that you know does all drawing all of these bodies. It's drawing the subtraction or taking this, doing the subtraction, the Boolean subtraction at the very end before, um, you know, we kind of close out the assembly. So, yeah, the joist hangers are being drawn before we do the Boolean subtraction. And that is why there are none being assigned. And what that also allows is the fact that if you want to do a Boolean subtraction over these hangers, it should subtract them. In fact, we're going to test that right now. I have actually not even tested that off uh, in my own testing but I'm going to just drop it right here and then let's see if we regen this this should actually not only delete the joist tails um, but it should uh, delete those hangers so let's go ahead and regen that give it a second to run and yes it did see so see how it not only just it deleted all the wood but also got rid of the hangers so that is the the intent there and just want to make that very clear why you're not getting uh, hangers on the tails. So the subtract feature literally subtracts things away. But again, it is running at the very end. All right. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything. I think also this video is probably getting long enough. Um, so 
if we have any other questions about joists and joist hangers, um, please give me a holler. Um, email is my uh, probably the best way to get a hold of me. And once again, guys, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you later.